like rock and roll bands. I think they are so cool. I think they're so cool. And as a little kid growing up, I emulated bands. I emulated rock and roll bands. And I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to be in a rock and roll band. And recently I started to wonder if other people that I was friends with, if they also liked bands and if they wanted to be in bands. And so I posed a question and I conducted a study on one of the most academically respected online forums currently that we know, Facebook. And I posed this question, when you were in middle school or high school and you were in love with a band and you liked that band and you wanted to be in that band, what was that band? And I got some great answers on Facebook. I really did. Are you ready for some of them? Here's a small sampling. Oh, another question. That one might be for you. The Who, a great band. Kiss, of course, Kiss. You know we'd get that one. Uh, Led Zeppelin, a great band. And if you feel it, you can go woo. It's OK to woo. If you're feeling one of these bands, you can woo. If there's a band up there that you want to woo to. Queen, I'm sorry, that was Queen. This is the Go-Go's. This one was, I wanted to be so badly. I wanted to be in the Go-Go's. That was the response that I got on Facebook. And of course, Van Halen, a great band, great band. Oh my goodness. Here we have Destiny's Child, amazing singers, amazingly talented women. Here we have New Kids on the Block, amazing dudes, amazingly talented singers. Uh, Nirvana, of course, a great band. I got a lot of that as a response. We have The Grateful Dead. All right, I thought I'd get a woo in this academic crowd. You guys spend a lot of time studying, then a lot of time relaxing. All right, and this, of course, is Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, very popular, and I like them a lot, too. A lot of cool instrumentalists in that band. And I, when this next band was mentioned for the first time on Facebook, I, the only reaction that I could have is, oh my gosh, me too! And this is Motley Crue. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to be the drummer on the far left. His name is Tommy Lee. And in middle school, I loved this band. And this band scared a lot of parents. In middle school, this band scared a lot of parents. But also, I got answers on Facebook like this. And this guy scared a lot of parents, too, in the 50s. But would you rather have your child grow up to be like Elvis or like Motley Crue? Or like Elvis in the 70s? Uh, sorry, that jumped ahead too fast. But I got excited about showing you the Vegas and Elvis picture. It's just how I roll. So I did like Elvis, too. And I also liked... Uh, you too. And I liked The Police. Stuart Copeland's a great drummer. And I absolutely have always loved The Beatles. But in this stage of the game, Beatles came up a lot. Everybody wanted to be in The Beatles. Well, not everybody, because some people also wanted to be in The Go-Go's. Equally good, different band. But anyway, so I wanted to go into phase two of my very scientific study. And I wanted to find out what bands my parents were into. I wanted to find out what my mom and dad liked. What influenced my life? Why did I like music so much? So I called up my mom on the phone, and I asked the question, Mom, what bands did you want to be? And she said, well, I never really wanted to be in a band. I just wanted to be Julie Andrews. <laughs> right? She wanted to sing on a mountaintop. Go, oh, Mom. Well, this is a photograph of my mom as a young girl, and I kind of know that she's kind of Julie Andrews-y, right? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then uh, I, I wanted to know about rock and roll, though. I said, Mom, what about rock and roll? What about rock and roll? And she said, OK, well, I never wanted to be in a band. I just wanted to be near the bands. I wanted to be near the bands. I had a crush on a guy named Bobby V. And he had a really, he, I thought he was singing to me, she said over the phone. And then she, of course, she loved R R Ricky Nelson, who sang, Hello, Mary Lou. It's a great song, and she loved him. She also loved the Everly Brothers. Dream, 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 dream. So my mother loved these very respectable young men, very handsome. So I, I respect my mom for loving those young men. And then I wanted to get my, my dad on the phone, and I got my dad on the phone. I said, Dad, what were you into growing up? And he told me that in middle school, he was into the doo-wop bands. He was into the bands that did great harmonies. So his, the first band that he mentioned was the Drifters under the boardwalk, right? And I was like, oh, that's great. Very popular band. And then he told me that he also loved the Four Freshmen. I wasn't as familiar with the Four Freshmen's music, but he told me that they have harmonies like whipped cream. <laughs> that's a good thing. I don't know what that means, but it's a good thing, right? <laughs> whipped cream, the Four Freshmen. It's amazing. And of course, the Temptations. 
my girl, right? So this is my dad's influence as a young man. And in high school, he even formed a, an acapella group and he sang in the hallway and in the stairwells of his high school. What a stud, right? What a stud. This is awesome. And then he went to college and he started listening to Jerry and the Pacemakers. And he fell in love with the Beatles, also harmonies, but a little more rock and roll. And of course, just like his son, because I'm a big influence on him, um, he also liked the Beatles. And at this time, this is 1964, and in 1964, he formed his very own rock and roll band. And this is The Shadows. That's my dad on the second from the right, and he's the drummer and a singer in this band, and this is a very dangerous band. And this is the man that my mother started to date, right? Very dangerous, right? Very dangerous. Not this dangerous, but <laughs> dangerous nonetheless. So my mother started to date my dad and, uh, in 1964. In 1967, they got married, and they moved to New York City. And uh, my dad got a record deal with a new band called the Nova Local. And this is an ad for their, for their first album. And here's the cover of their first album. And now my dad is the second from the left on this. Still a drummer, still a singer, but more colorful. <laughs> Mas peligro more dangerous, right? So here he is, and I know that my mother really liked Julie Andrews, and she really liked Ricky Nelson, so maybe she started dating my dad because he looked like Ricky Nelson. There's this resemblance. Stretch it, okay? <laughs> but really, like, maybe she fell in love with my dad because he looked more like her first love, Julie Andrews. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a second to digest this, right? That is the same hairdo, and that is awesome. So that is Julie Andrews and my dad, and maybe that's why my mother fell in love with him and married him. It's a possibility, right? But they did get married, and then they had a baby. And this is me. I'm part of the trio in this picture. That is my mother, and that is me. But before I was born, we had the big brother, which is Adam, and he's in the bottom right, I'm on the bottom left. And this is kind of a quartet. Now they're forming a little rock and roll band of their own, right? kind of groovy, kind of groovy. And then they added the third. Look, bottom right, that's Andrew. He's a cute little boy. He's my little brother. That's me on the left. And then we started to grow up, and then we started to blame each other for stuff. <laughs> and here we are as a full-on rock and roll band. And I call us a rock and roll band because we're on a journey together as a family. We're on some sort of rock and roll tour as a family. This is my brother's band in the senior year of high school. This is one of the coolest bands for me because I was a freshman in high school. They were seniors. This is Earth Dog. And Earth Dog was incredible. And that is Larry on the left and my brother on the, in the middle and Christopher on the right. And I love them. And they were influential in my life. And since that time, since they graduated from high school, they have gone on to form other bands. They have started new bands. And the next band I'm going to show you is Larry's latest and greatest band. This is Larry's family. This is called the Larrys. That's what I call them. And this is my brother's band, the Cutie Patooties. Adam and the Cutie Patooties. And now Christopher, the bass player, he went way beyond. He went way beyond. He is here for all of us. Christopher is. His band defends the entire galaxy. And we are lucky that Christopher is a Jedi master and defending all of us. But they're not just in these bands. Here is Christopher as a wonderful partner and an artistic collaborator. Here is my brother in another one of his bands. He's about to run 50 kilometers, and he's standing next to people that he trained with. That's another one of his bands. It's a team. And this next one is Larry. And Larry is on the far right. And there was no way that I could remember what Larry did in this picture. So I called him up. And I had to write down the extent of what his role was here. He is the director of critical care, San Juan Island EMS, and Medevac. And his band is receiving the Fixed Wing Ambulance Award of Excellence. That's amazing. That's another one of Larry's bands. Larry plays guitar. And he's a dad. And he's on a team that does amazing things. They're all in different bands. It's amazing. And what I want to say to you guys today is that you are in a band. Every single person in this room is in a band. If you're on a team, if you're in a relationship, if you have roommates, you're in a band. The cool part about thinking of your life in a band is that you play an instrument. In your bands, in the groups that you hang out with, you bring your instrument to that band. 
You have skills, you have unique talents that no one else has, and you bring that to the band, and that makes the band so cool. You play an instrument in that band. These guys all play an instrument. They all bring different things to their band. These guys all play different instruments and bring different things to the band. These guys all play different instruments and bring different things to this band. This is a band of chefs. This is my little brother and his family when they came to my birthday party at my house. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not my brother. No, it is. That's the Biltmore Estate in, in North Carolina. But his band, his band, they all have different skills and unique talents that they bring to their band. And it's awesome and amazing. And here's the whole extended family. These are my parents and my brothers and all of our bands. This is our extended family band. And we have our nuclear bands. And all of us work in different ways. And we create different music because of the different members in our band. And each member of the band brings different instruments. So remember this right now. You're in a band in your relationships with other people. And you bring something unique and special to those bands because you play an instrument. This guy is Kermit. He brings something to his band, right? He plays something unique. He has skills, special skills that are all his own. This guy also has very special skills, unique talents that he brings to his band. And this guy, he will force himself into any band he wants to be in, right? His is animal. He can do anything he wants. But he is uniquely talented and gifted as being animal. And we celebrate that. One of the other cool things about you guys being in a band, which we all are, is that you're influential over your band. You have influence over the people you spend time with. Because of the way you play your instrument in your band, whether or not you show up on time, whether or not you show up ready to rock, you influence the other people in your band and the way they play. This is my family. This is my band. I influence their lives. If I don't get enough sleep and I'm cranky, I'm influencing their lives. I affect the way they live. They influence my life. If my wife is smiling, I am smiling. If my wife is not smiling, I better figure out why, right? <laughs> but even the youngest members of your bands, the smallest members of your bands have an influence over you. Any parents here, you understand this. The smallest members can affect your behavior by what they say and what they do or what they do not do when they've been asked to do it right? Even the smallest member of your bands are influential. This is a soccer team that I played on last summer. Just one day. It was a pickup game. But this is a group of head counselors at a summer camp, one of my favorite places in the world. This is in Maine. And I played on this team for five minutes because I was the least talented player on this team. But I was still an influential member of this band because of what I said on the sidelines, how I behaved, what I did. I might not have been a starter on this team, but I was still a member of the team and I was influential. I was part of this band because of the way I played my instrument. I'm also in this picture here. This is a volunteer committee that helped organize a regional conference for college students. Here, I play a much smaller role, but just as important as any of my other bands. Because what I do matters in this band. Whether or not I do my job affects the other members. My job was created for a purpose on this band, in this band, on this team. So right now, you got to understand that your individual instrument is important to the ensemble. No matter who you are, no matter how small you are or big you are, your instrument is important to your band. You're important to your ensemble. Seventh grade Jason, that's me right there. In seventh grade, my family moved to a new school system, moved to a brand new school. And I knew in seventh grade, at this point in my life, that I was a brilliant actor. I was a fantastic thespian. The stage was mine. And I knew at this point, I knew this, because in elementary school, where I went to school, the fourth graders is the, are the only ones that did the musical. And in fourth grade, I had a lead role. I had a lead role in my play in fourth grade. And we did Peter Pan, and I was Captain Hook. And that's me as Captain Hook. <laughs> no, it's not. That's Dustin Hoffman. We just couldn't find a picture of me from that year for some reason. But this is what I did that year, and I knew I was a good actor. In fifth grade, I watched the fourth graders do a play, lackluster. <laughs> In the sixth grade, the fourth graders were going to do Oliver Twist. And I, the fantastic actor, was invited to play the role of Fagin in the fourth grade play. Maybe because I was taller than the fourth graders. Maybe because I was just brilliant. Here's a picture of me as Fagin in the sixth grade. Proof that my story is true. 
So seventh grade Jason is in a brand new school at seventh and eighth grade, and they're putting on a play, and I am excited because I know how good I am, and I am ready to present my brilliant acting to this brand new school and all these new students, and none shall, everyone shall bow before this thespian. That year they were putting on The Wizard of Oz, and I knew that I was gonna be either the scarecrow, the tin man, or the lion, and I knew this, but I could have even been Dorothy because I was such a good actor. So I went to tryouts, and a couple days later, I got my role, and I went home to tell my parents, and I was so excited before they told me what my role was, and then I got home, and I wasn't very happy, and my parents could read it on my face, and, and they said, well, what's, what did you, what'd you get? And I said, I'm a munchkin. <laughs> I don't want to be a munchkin. I don't play munchkins. I'm an actor. Well, guess what they did? They convinced me to stick, stick with it. And, and you know what happened? I loved being in the cast. I loved the supporting role that year. I learned so much. And since this time in my life, I've played so many other supporting roles in all the different bands that I've been in. And we all have to do that sometimes. Sometimes we have to play an instrument that we don't want to play because what we do matters to the band. Sometimes we have to do a job that is not what we want to do for the sake of the band. What we do in our bands matters, even if it's something that we don't want to do. I rock the triangle. Growing up, I was also a drummer. And I played in a lot of orchestras and uh, a lot of bands and um, discovered that uh, the triangle is very important. The triangle is incredibly important to the band. And nobody ever volunteered to be the triangle player in any band that I was ever in. Nobody ever said, I want to be the triangle player. But somebody had to do the triangle. So when you get that job, you got to rock that triangle. And nobody rocks the tambourine, which is a secondary role, more than Stevie Nicks, the singer. So thank you, Stevie Nicks, for making the tambourine cool. Thank you, Stevie Nicks. Sorry. So are you helping your band, or are you hurting your band? Are your behaviors moving your band forward? Are you helping them be great at who they are? Are you supporting the instrumentation that they play? Are you letting people be themselves, or are you trying to make them more like you? Because remember, the instruments that are more diverse make the band better. Are you in tune? Are you keeping yourself in tune? And by this, I mean, are you healthy? So I got a quick story. This is my band from college. I was in six different bands my senior year, and one of my bands was called Life in General. And we rocked. We played every Tuesday night at a club called Ziggy's. And uh, we were amazing. I mean, we were huge in one zip code. We were very popular just in one zip code. And, and we, had a, we had a teenage fan who really fell in love with our band. And his name was Taylor. And he wanted to play a night with us. And we said, yes, Taylor, you can come play with us. Come and play with us at this show. And we gave him a CD. And he went home and he learned that, that on, uh, the song on his piano. And he came back to our show a couple weeks later, and we set up his piano on stage, and we set him up, and it came time for his song, and he, he walked up there, ready, I started the song, I was rocking the song, and, and he started to play his song, and, and when he started, he was out of tune. He was playing all the wrong notes. He wasn't just playing one wrong note, he was playing all the wrong notes. And he unplugged his, his piano real quick, and he wrapped up the cable, and he ran out the door, and we never saw him again that night. And I called him the next day, and I said, hey, Taylor, what happened? And he goes, I hate music. I'm never going to play again. I'm never going to play the piano again. I was terrible. I'm never going to play the piano again. And I said, well, what happened? He goes, well, I, bar I, I, I borrowed my dad's piano, and it's tuned differently. He uses it in church, and he supports singers who sing like a quarter step down. And so he was so out of tune with our band. Taylor, that's Taylor. I don't have a picture of Taylor. Um, this represents Taylor. I don't have a picture of Taylor at this time in his life. He was so out of tune, but we gave him a second chance. And he came back two weeks later and rocked it. And since that time... This is a photograph that Taylor took from a Big and Rich show in, for the Atlanta Braves. He was doing a show and a tour with Big and Rich. That's, you gotta be in tune for that. This is a shot of Taylor on the far right, uh, bowing at the end of a show with Emmy Lou Harris. And this is Taylor at the uh, Venetian in Las Vegas, uh, taking a bow with the Judd sisters on their reunion show. So Taylor went from being in tune to being very out of tune, and out of tune into in tune. And we are all in his shoes. All of us are going to be out of tune. We are all going to be out of tune sometimes. But our goal is to get ourselves in tune, in tunes with ourselves and in tune with our band. My family is not always in tune. Don't be fooled by those cute pictures of my kids. Right? We are out of tune sometimes, but we have to work hard to get in tune. 
We are all going to be out of tune for so many different reasons, but our goal should be to get in tune and to be in sync with our families. So what I want you guys to remember from today is that you are in a band, that you play an instrument in that band, that you are influential in your band, and that what you do matters. And to all of my Facebook friends who always wanted to be in a band, and to any of you guys who wanted to be in a band, let me tell you, you are in a band. And you're going to rock that band. And you're going to do great things in that band. So go forth and rock your band. Thank you very much. I do have time for one little song. And I want you guys to sing along if you know the word. Yeah, yeah. Can I get a yeah, yeah? Yeah. All right. Here we go. If I sang out of tune, would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song And I'll try not to sing out of key I get by the little help from my friends I get high the little help from my friends I'm gonna try the little help, try the little help Try the little help from my friends 